My name is Catlin Tucker. I'm an English teacher. I teach 9th and 10th grade English language arts at Windsor High School, which is in Sonoma County. I also am a writer and a blogger and now a presenter. And my journey with technology and blended learning really began I would say about seven years ago. I was at this point in my teaching career where I thought, gosh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I was frustrated in the classroom, what I had imagined in credential school in terms of students engaging and being risk takers in the classroom just wasn't manifesting and I was disappointed. I had moments where I thought, oh my gosh, I've chosen the wrong profession. And it was at that point when I actually was on maternity leave with my first child and started teaching online college level courses and started to get interested in the potential of online conversations and online work, asynchronous kind of happening at different times work. So when I came back into the classroom, I started experimenting with what would online components look like in a traditional classroom. And I should say, I work in a very low-tech classroom. There's no hardware save the computer on my desk. So I had to be really strategic and creative when it came to creating my version of a blended learning model. So I capitalized on my students' connectivity at home, and my first real experience was with online discussions. And I remember the, the first night I launched my first question, I was stunned because the first three students to respond are kids who never talk in my class. And I thought, wow, this is, this is a wake-up call. These kids clearly wanted a voice in my classroom, but for whatever reason, they just weren't comfortable in engaging in real time. And, and the byproduct of their online engagement, which is something I didn't expect at all either, was how it revolutionized, totally changed their interaction in the classroom. I think once kids were, especially the shy kids or kids who need more time to process, were able to consider a topic and articulate a response, reply to peers, get validation from their peers, all of a sudden they're so much more confident having conversations, engaging and risk-taking in the classroom. And so from that experience, I started just kind of picking up tools and creating this very ad hoc, like teacher-driven blended learning model. And in my classroom, I am taking advantage of every single device that walks through my door. So I tell parents and students, if you have a device, whether it's an iPod touch or a cell phone or a tablet or an Android device I've never seen, bring it in and we use them. And not every student has a device, which I actually kind of love. Um, when we all have our own devices, we get kind of you know, in our own little worlds. But when kids share devices, all of a sudden the energy goes from I'm in my own space to instant collaboration, which is what I'm always looking for in the classroom. I'm trying to help them communicate online, communicate in person, to create this very student-centered experience in the classroom. Because as a teacher, I very much believe that our collective intelligence far exceeds any one member of the class, myself included. Um, I'm the first one to say that, day one, that I think our collective potential is so powerful. And so the rest of the year, I try to stand behind that statement and really take the focus off of me and put it onto my students. And we start lessons in class, they continue online, I weave them back into the classroom. So we're no longer limited to any physical space or time in terms of of their learning or their engagement. And there's so many amazing ed tech tools that are popping up all the time that allow me to continually add to my teacher tool belt. I tell teachers all the time who are interested in blended learning that you don't have to do it all at once. You can pick up a tool, make a ton of mistakes, learn from those mistakes, don't be afraid to fail. We have a big taboo around failure, which I think limits a lot of us in terms of what we try and what we experiment with. And then once you have learned from those moments, then pick up another tool and try it out. So for me, I've created this teacher tool belt where we use lots of different tools in lots of different ways in the classroom, online for homework, and it's exciting. Kids share things online and share things now in my classroom that I just, I never heard those kinds of questions and insights prior to adopting a blended learning model and really shifting from a very teacher-centered classroom to a much more student-centered classroom where they're challenged all the time to have conversations, research things on their phones, and, and really create together, which is so much more powerful. I think if teachers were really honest with themselves, it's so much easier to stand up in front of a group of students and tell them everything we know about a topic we've been teaching for 10, 
15 years, it's much harder to create experiences, learning experiences that really engage students and put the onus on them to be the generators of information. Uh, I wrote a blog recently where I said, I'm not trying to be the fountain of knowledge anymore. I want to be the architect of learning experiences and blending online components and technology tools into my everyday practice has been the game changer for me.